Hallelujah. Um, uh, we'll be after that song. Luke 14, verse 25 says, Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, Jesus wasn't impressed by the crowds. He wasn't intimidated by the crowds. He continued to proclaim God's standard. And for us, as a reminder, week after Easter, we're reading about us bearing our own cross. And Jesus died on the cross for us. We're called to live a crucified life for him. We're to crucify that old flesh. And he's kind of hyperbole there. We're supposed to, in comparison to our love for God, our love for our family and friends should be, should be hate. He's not telling us to hate our family, but in comparison to our devotion to God. Amen. So let's ask ourselves as we pray, where, am, I, am, I that, am I as committed to God as he is to me? He's pretty committed. He gave his life for you and I. Am I willing to lay down my plans, my purposes, <laughs> and fulfill his call upon my life? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your incredible love. We still marvel. We later we still marvel at the incredible price that you paid for, for us, for me. God, you gave your very best. Thank you, Lord, for your incredible act of love towards me. Lord, grant us the grace to totally commit, to realize there is nothing in life that compares to you. Lord. Nothing in life compares to walking with you, doing your will. Lord, may that and just fill our hearts today as we look to you and put our trust in you. Thank you for this incredible time to acknowledge the goodness of God. Declare, Lord, that our hope is in you, our trust is in you, because you are a great and a mighty and an awesome and a holy and a just God, and we never tire of talking about your goodness towards us. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your presence today. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Emily if she would come forward and give us our missions update today. Emily Brissett. Are you excited as I am about missions? Yeah. I knew you'd say that. Yeah. Yeah. They make me a little so if I don't look their way, you understand. She was my boss, and that's it. Okay. You know what faith promise pledge is, right? Who can tell me what a faith promise pledge is? Holy cow. We got education here. Faith promise pledge is an exciting invention. Make sure that you and your family make a faith promise every year. Not only do we make a faith promise every year, remind yourself because of it. We are a missionary of supply. Missionaries go but we supply. I would like to show you our flower. That's where we are today. Take her mic down a little bit. There's a because shot. of you, we are ahead of the game in our missions giving. Does that excite you? Yes. yes. But let me tell you something else that faith promise does. It causes you to pray more for the missionaries. You pray for them? Yes. I have here our brand new, updated, current missions bulletin. 
And I'll tell you why this one is so special. I'm not going to pass them out. I'm going to be out there in the foyer with David and Kay. And if you want a new updated bulletin, you can get one. Well, I'm going to call Brother Gross up because I need his help. Remember this box said that we couldn't open it until April 11th? Is that today? Yep. It is? Good. I'm excited. Because, are you ready to hear? Yeah. Our drum roll got broke. <laughs> we can clap anyway. That's all right. We can make a drum roll. Everybody put your hands on front of your pew and let's go. One, two, three. Whoa. Good. Okay, here we go. All right. Brother Gross, in this box is some exciting news. I want you to pull out one at a time and tell me what it says before he tells you. Did you give to your faith promise? Yeah. Okay, here it comes. It's at work because we, this church, you, your dedicated people have now advanced our missions family. Who are they? Jim and Nicole Strange. Do you remember that? They were just here. We're going to take them on as a play. Yes. Chris and Debbie Bowser. Were they yeah. here? Yeah. Yes. From Peru. Jim and Meg Thacker. Were they here? Yeah. Man, he got a big offering. He must have done good when he was here. So this, I want you to know, we have added three more missionaries. Why? Because of faith, promise, pledge that you gave. Now, I want you to know something. If you did not have the opportunity at the banquet to fill out a pledge, and you feel cheated because you weren't involved, I want you to know you can do it today. If you have not, and you want to fill out a card, raise your hand. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Rose, I was in a seminar with him a little while ago, and this is what he told me. He said, of the missionaries that we have, we give $60 a month. How many like a paycheck raise? Yeah. Yeah, me too. He said, this is what you said, right? We should raise our missionaries five dollars every year. Every, that's what you said. Every year. I remembered that. And I thought, man, we're just grateful we're beginning to grow. But I guess from now until October, you can decide on your faith pledge, we got to give more, and you can figure that in. Aren't you excited about our missionaries? Do we have the picture? Good girl. I want you to know that all of our missionaries are extremely important. Rose and Philippines, go ahead. Africa. Chi Alpha. Latin America. Brother Ryder, he's so wonderful. The Grays Intercultural Ministers. And Sharon Ellis. That's your family. Yep. Make sure 
every day, you pray for our missionaries. Barb, would you pray for all of our missionaries? Lord, I see this as a real honor. I thank you, Lord, for the missionaries. I thank you that they've given up things that we can't imagine doing without. And they've gone on to other cultures, other countries. Thank God. They serve you, and Lord, we need to lift their hands and pray for them. Many times we felt alone. Someone praying for us got us through whatever it was. Lord Jesus, we bow to you. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you thanks for the people who will selflessly go on worshiping, showing, caring, loving, being your hands your voice, your love. We praise you and thank you for all that work in the field. In Jesus' holy name. And amen. I told Pastor Rusty last night, I said, I, I don't want to follow Sister Emily anymore. It's just, how do you follow, how do you follow after that? It's just so hard to get the crowd back and do get them all. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in time, we will go ahead and dismiss all the children and the children's workers for their ministry. We go back. Some of them are very excited, you can see. And uh, several opportunities for you this week to gather. You know, it's so important. I mean, we love Sunday mornings, but it's in small groups where we're able to develop relationships and just want to remind you that we have many of those available tonight at 5 o'clock. Uh, Jan and my group will be meeting here at the church and uh, love to, I know some of you start to trickle back after COVID, so we'd love to have you join us tonight at 5 o'clock. Also, the youth will be meeting tonight at 5 o'clock here at the church. Tuesday night will be the uh, REAP small group here at the church at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night, we have our online um, prayer meeting, Bible study. At, uh, fa on Facebook at Rusty and Tish Foley, so uh, join us for that. We had a great time last Wednesday night, and then Friday night, Ed and Jean Bundes will have a small group at their home. So plenty of opportunities for us to gather together and to enjoy fellowship, and we encourage you to take advantage of those opportunities, get to know one another, be able to pray for one another. There's something about that small group atmosphere where you feel like you're a part of something and know that uh, you are needed and wanted. Amen. I think I've covered everything, right? Okay, so I'm going to introduce today, we have a very special guest, Pastors Dave and Kay Gross, um, from originally Northwest Assembly of God, then Radiant Life, and actually Jan and I were part of that church way back in the 80s, and those of you, I know many of you have had the Foundations course, well, Jan and I were actually part of the first, we were the inaugural class uh, of, I think it was 1986, something like that, that's when I was in I was in grad school at Ohio State, but I was in a, in a better school at, uh, at Radiant Life, uh, learning God's Word, and that's something that's going to last forever. But uh, So they're very special people, been uh, uh, just ministering in Central Ohio for just decades. And so thank you for joining us today, Pastor Dave. I don't know if Pastor Kay's coming up too, but... Thank you, Pastor Rick. Do I preach from down here or up there? Wherever you're coming. Wherever, okay, good. Um, I'd like some help. If I could have a couple uh, ushers pass these out to everyone. If you're not an usher, you just got recruited, so great. <laughs> Over here on this, um, on the back wall, there's a poster that says, All for Jesus. And that's the 2021 um, statement of world missions for the Assemblies of God. It's a statement that is one of those that can mean more than one thing. So that when you look at the statement, all for Jesus, it may mean something to one person, but another person reads it, and they read something totally different into it. And I just want to talk a little bit this morning about what it means to be all for Jesus. In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, we have the very last earthly words of Jesus. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
Here in this passage, we're confronted with the fact that all authority belongs to Jesus. God the Father is the creator of all, and he's the ultimate authority. But God took the authority in his hands and he handed it to Jesus and said, I want you to have all authority. This is for you. It's for you. Have you ever been uh, given something and you look at it and go, oh, th this is mine. It's for me. Well, God took all authority and he put it into the hands of Jesus. And he said, this authority is now yours. All authority in heaven and on earth. Now, where do you and I live? We live on the earth. We live where Jesus has all authority. What does that mean? It means that Jesus has all authority over, in, and through your life. Now, we don't like to look at a fact that someone else has authority in our life. Um, we, we don't like that. We don't like it when someone else is in control. Because we like to control what we say and what we do and where we go. I don't know about you, but telling me to wear a mask is about to kill me. You know, and, and so Kay and I were at Red Lobster on Thursday, and I had on my Ohio for Jesus mask. I didn't have it on my jacket. I had on my Ohio for Jesus mask. And um, I, I, wanted, I wanted to make an unkind statement about their mask policy. Um, you know, I, I'm to the place where I want to shove those signs up somebody's nose. I can tell some of you are at the same spot. Uh, somebody in authority keeps saying, wear a mask. The ultimate authority in our lives is Jesus. God said to Jesus, this authority is for you. All authority. Second application when you look at all for Jesus um, is in Matthew 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. All nations. So Jesus has all authority. But when we look at this statement, God wants all nations to be a part of that. Pastor Rick mentioned it. The last earthly words of Jesus to make disciples is, is targeted to all the nations. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all nations so that all people can be for Jesus. I have people that come and say, well, when is the end going to come? Well, I'll tell you when the end is going to come. It's when all nations have heard the message of Jesus. Throughout all of Scripture, God is relentless about seeing His entire creation redeemed. He wants people in all nations to declare that Jesus is Lord. All nations. It's interesting, 172 times in the Scripture, as you go through from the front all the way to the back, 172 times, you find something indicating all nations, all peoples. You find from the north, south, east, and west, you find all kingdoms, you find Jews and Gentiles, you have those from far and near. Every ethnicity, Pastor Rusty mentioned it, 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 you know, different colors, different accents, all for Jesus. Every tribe and tongue, every economic class, every ethnicity, every people group. And so Jesus, uh, all authority is for Jesus. But all nations are for Jesus. Revelation 5, verse 9, you purchase for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. See, Jesus is adamant about making disciples in all the nations. Now, what is the current situation of the assemblies of God in our world today? One of the main reasons the assemblies of God came into existence in 1914 was because they made a statement that they wanted to do the greatest work of evangelism this world had ever seen. They made that statement in 2014. There were 300 ministers 
that were gathered. There were 32 missionary groups that were gathered. If you look at this little pamphlet that was handed to you, you find what we are currently doing in Assemblies of God missions around the world. Today, the Assemblies of God is growing at twice the speed of the world's population growth. Can you say amen to that? Amen. We're growing twice the speed that the population is growing. So we have a task. Because there are still a lot of people that have not heard the message. 30% of the world's population have never heard the name of Jesus. Here in Ohio, we have 80 missionary units that are representing us around the world. Last year, the Assemblies of God, including you, the people in Ohio, in Assemblies of God churches, gave $5.4 million to missions. Pat yourself on the back. Ohio has set a goal that uh, over the next eight and a half years, we want to see our missions ministry increase three times over. Currently, we have 80 missionaries. We want to see 320 missionaries by the end of 2030. Now, what's the current world situation? There's approximately 7.8 billion people on the face of the planet. I checked that figure this morning because it's continuously changing. Seven. 8 billion people in our world 2 billion or a little over 30% have little or no opportunity to know the truth about Jesus 10% of the world population are Christians they're devout Christians 20% of our world are nominal Christians you know I used to call them C&E Christians they went Christmas and Easter they know about Jesus if they're asked are you a Christian they're Christians 40% have heard the gospel in some form, but they've not said yes to the message of that. And then the scary figure is 30% have no exposure to the gospel, to the Bible, to a church. They've never heard the name of Jesus. When we look at those figures, is it possible for us to make an impact in our world? Is it possible for us to do anything that's going to change that? Yes, the answer is yes. It's more than possible. On average, the world population has been increasing by 1.5% since 1900. Christianity is growing at 3.5%, or more than twice the speed of growth of the population. But there's still that task remaining, because there's 17,000 people groups in our world. A people group is a group that's unique to them. Maybe it's a unique language. Maybe it's some... It's something that identifies them and sets them apart from others. Today, there are 6,500 people groups in our world that have never been reached. We're doing pretty good. There's 17,000. That means there's only 6,500 that haven't heard. But for those that have never heard, it's critical. It's eternal. And so there's still that task remaining. We call those people that have never heard the message of Jesus UPG or unreached people groups. 30% of our world, over 2 billion people. Nations like Yemen compel me. The nation of Yemen is on the south end of the Arabian Peninsula. It sits on the east side of the Red Sea. They estimate that the population of Yemen is about 28 million people. Well, how many is 28 million people? That's the people who live in Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. And I want to put this in proportion for you so that you get a picture of this. It, it grabs a hold of your heart. If you filled the Ohio Stadium, where the Buckeyes play, if you filled that, 105,000 seats, if you filled it and put 7,000 more people down on the, on the field, and then you put four Christians in the seats. That is proportionate to how many Christians. There's a thousand Christians in Yemen with 28 million people. If you filled Ohio Stadium with 7,000 extra seats on the field and you put four Christians in the stands, that is proportionate to what Yemen has. I 
don't know about you, but I've been to sporting events. I've been to the Ohio Stadium when it was packed full, but it didn't have 7,000 people on the, on, the, on the floor. But looking around, thinking that there's only four Christians in that place, and i got to find one, it's probably not going to happen real quick. And it's probably not going to happen real quick that they're going to have the ability to relate to me and tell me about Jesus. To be unreached as a person in Yemen means that uh, there are people who will, who will be born, they will live, and they will die and never hear the name of Jesus. They, they don't have Christian television. They don't have Christian radio. They don't have Bibles. They don't know a Christian. Why do we do missions? Why is Sister Emily so... So passionate about missions. This is why. It's because there are people that don't know what is known as the 1040 window in the area between the 10th and the 40th parallels, spanning from North Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. 95% of the world's unreached people live in that box. The majority of the world's Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists live there. Two out of every three people on the planet live in that box. Five out of six people groups are in that box. But here's the figure that groups me. 60,000 of those people in that box die daily and they've never heard the name of Jesus. A big part of why these groups have not been reached is that the geography is hard in that area. The language is hard in that area. And they have a cultural barrier. So when you look at the people in that group, it's hard to communicate Jesus to them because we don't speak their language. It's hard to communicate Jesus to them because it's really just physically hard to get to them. And then it's hard for us to communicate Jesus to them because of their traditions that they believe, their cultural bias. 10% of all Christian workers or less minister in that box. Now, how many think if, if the majority of the people that don't know Jesus live in that box, that, that's where we ought to focus? 1% of the kingdom's finances end up in the box. In 1970, 45% of the people of our world had never heard the name of Jesus. But currently that number is at 30%. So hallelujah. It's going down. What's our responsibility? That brings us to the third application of all for Jesus. All we have, do, and are is for Jesus. All we have, all we do, all we are is for Jesus. Our first responsibility is prayer. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into that harvest field, into the box. I want to encourage you as you're praying for that, would you pray specifically for young couples? Would you pray specifically for the kids that are in other parts of this building this morning. Would you pray that they get a burden to go to the Muslim and the Hindu and the Buddhist? I have people that come and say, well, Pastor Dave, what's God's will for my life? First of all, God's will for your life is every day pray for the Muslim, the Buddhist, and the Hindu. Every day pray for people that aren't there. You know what I've been praying the last week? I've been praying, Lord, tonight in the home of a Hindu, someplace in our world. Lord, would you send Jesus? Just like Jesus showed up on the road to Damascus and appeared to Saul of Tarsus, would you show up in homes around our world and confront them with who you are? Who are you, Lord? Jesus says, I'm Jesus that you're persecuting. You want to know God's will for your life? That's his will for your life. 
the wrong bummed out in my life. You know, you, most of us get bummed out when we don't have our purpose right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you're bummed out in life, if you're discouraged in life, I, let me just give you a little psychological help right now. <laughs> you start praying for the lost. You start praying for Jesus to reveal himself into people's lives, and all of a sudden you'll, you'll start getting a little healthier. Amen. We're to pray for more workers to be in the harvest. Pray for young families. Pray for our teenagers. Pray for our kids. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest. He said, pray for workers. And that's God's will for each and every one of us here today. Pray for the two billion that have never heard the name of Jesus. And our second responsibility is an either or. How many like either ors? You, you get a little bit of a choice there. Well, God, God's a God of choice, and so he gives you an either or. You can pick this one or that one. We either go or we give so others can go. Jesus said to go into all the world a few months ago. We put Christine Little on an airplane and sent her back to the nation of Zambia. She had spent the last 15 years in Zambia. My guess is she'll spend the rest of her life in Zambia. Christine's mom, Sandy, is going blind. Sandy doesn't have anybody else. Sandy lives in our community. She attends our local church. But she doesn't have any, she doesn't have family members. She does, she's alone. And you know what Sandy says? Sandy says, Christine, you've got to get on the plane and you've got to go to Zambia. You, to you, for you to stay and help me with my blindness, blindness is nothing because you need to go to Zambia and you need to help them with their spiritual blindness. Two Sundays ago, we had Sandy at our family dinner. Because we've taken her in. We're her family. Kate took her a meal this week. Christine is gone. Another lady in our network, Alexandria Pavlantis, was commissioned last summer because she feels called to go to the, the nation of Vietnam. A single lady. Here's one for you. Do you know we have seven women in missions for every man. If you're a young man, I challenge you to help fix that figure. We need men who are willing to stand up and say, I'll go for the cause of Jesus. But it takes people who are willing to go. Have you prayed about going? Parents, I want to challenge you to begin to plant the seeds about going in the hearts of your children. Our 11-year-old granddaughter, Avery, she feels called to China. So you know what she did? She, she's trying to teach herself Mandarin. So that when she is old enough to go, she has a jump on, on the language she's going to need to speak. Regularly mention to your kids. Tell them it's what we do. What does God want me to do? He said, go into all the world. You say, well, all of us? Well, we have flipped over the Great Commission. And we think, I'm going to be a doctor, a lawyer, I'm going to be a, a dentist, I'm going to be a, a trash collector, I'm going to be an IT person, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to be something, unless God calls me. Let me just straighten your theology out. That's backwards. That's back hazard. Here's the way it works. Jesus said to go into all the world. Did he say to go to Newark? He said go into all the world and preach the gospel. And let me encourage you to teach your kids, to teach your grandkids, God has called you to be a missionary unless he calls you to Newark to be a doctor. Some of you are looking at me like, I've never heard that before. Well, I'm just fixing your theology this morning. Here's what it's all about. It's we're going to go, and what we're going to ask the Lord is, where do you want me to stop?
He said to go into all the world. Where do I stop? All of our children are for Jesus. All for Jesus. Some of us believe all of the children of Water's Edge Church are for Jesus. They're all going to go, but I want to keep mine for Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, for the holidays. Dick Brogdon. How many of you have ever read any of Dick Brogdon stuff? Okay, we brought some of it. It's out here. You only buy a Dick Brogdon book if you're willing to have your world turned upside down. This gospel will mess you up. And if you want to be messed up for the Lord for a while, buy Dick Brogdon's book, This Gospel. Here's what Brogdon says. He's the founder of Live Dead, and he says, I urge you to send your best. Don't send your cast-offs. Send your professionals. Send the pastors of your best churches. Send the leaders and influencers. Send your richest and most educated. Send the ones you can't afford to send. We send our sons and our daughters to die for the flag and freedom in Iraq and Afghanistan from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. But will we release them to live and die for Jesus among the unreached people groups? Don't hoard the best resources to your overfed selves. Amen. How many think, you know, if that one statement messes you up, a book full of that will mess you up. Amen. Courage your children and young adults to be goers. The one with all authority, wanting all nations to know, says, all of you are for the taking of the message to Jesus, to our world. And you either go or you give. Romans 10, 13, for whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach Unless they are sent. You're either the preacher or you're the sender. Mm -hmm. Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings of good things. Paul tells the Romans that those who go have to be sent. And that means those of us who do not go, we have to pay the way for those who go. See, you can't be working for money and sharing the message at the same time. If all two billion people need to hear, you either have to give so somebody can go, or you have to go. I've thought about this. I've looked at this. It's the way it works. If you're a giver, let me give you some good news. How many want some good news? You like good news? Here's the good news. It doesn't matter what the economy is doing right now. It all belongs to Jesus. It's all for Jesus. And let me make you a promise. God won't let the wells run dry that water his fields. Do you understand what that says? If you're part of watering the fields of missions... God won't let your well run dry. Jesus said, give and it'll be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. And if you're a giver, God will make sure you have an abundance to give. It's his promise. How many have ever heard of C.S. Lewis? Yeah, C.S. Lewis, a British writer, wrote the Chronicles of Narnia and some other stuff. He said this about giving above the tithe. He said, if our charities do not pinch or hamper us, I should say they're too small. There ought to be things we should like to do and cannot because our charities' expenditures excludes them. In other words, if our mission's giving doesn't cause us to not be able to afford some other things. We're not giving enough to missions. There ought to be
be some things that you, you know. A few weeks ago, a guy calls and says, Pastor Dave, the, the Lord just laid you on my heart that, you know, I got this Harley motorcycle. I can't ride it anymore. He's had a foot amputated and some different stuff. And he says, I think the Lord's telling me, you know, to call you about this motorcycle. Well, you know what? I wanted to say, I'll come over and get that baby. 4,000 bucks, that's all you want for this Harley? I, you know, I still got my motorcycle endorsement. You know what? We're giving to plant a church in Marysville. We're giving, we're giving, we're giving. And there are some things, it's not that I don't want it, I don't need it. How many think a guy that's almost 70 years old should be on a motorcycle anyway? <laughs> but there are some things in life that we don't need. And there ought to be some missions giving that's got teeth in it that says, I can't go do this because I give the missions. C.S. Lewis was, say, was saying, be a giver. There ought to be things you can't do because you're a giver. He was saying giving is more important than some of the stuff. We need to remember it's all for Jesus. Let me make you another promise. If God can get it through you, he will give it to you. If God can get it through you, he will give it to you. God's looking for funnels. He's looking those who will channel his resources for his world. You say, will I ever be able to take a vacation again? Will I ever be able to play around the golf? Um, yes. God will bless you if you first seek his kingdom and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. You seek first his kingdom. You seek first either going or giving. And if you're not going, you got to be a giver. In a few minutes, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God produces millionaires in this room. How many have ever been prayed over to be a millionaire? Anybody ever been prayed over to be a millionaire? Well, you're going to get your first this morning. Because I'm believing for millionaires. Because if you're not giving your life as a, as, as a missionary, God has called you to be a money maker to support his kingdom. He says... Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. He'll let you play around the golf. He's the one with all power and authority. He says, go. He's the one that wants all nations included in this. He wants our all. Over the last five years, our church in Dublin has given over a million dollars to missions. We don't have any millionaires. We're just a whole group of people like you that believe in the kingdom. But our believing is that by the end of 2030, we're going to be giving a million dollars a year. Why? Because there's, there's 2 billion people, there's 30% of the world's population that have never heard the name of Jesus. I challenge you to think of every dollar that is in your stewardship as potential for supporting missions. You know what? I still do my own brake jobs. I've gotten to the place where I could afford to pay somebody to do my brakes, but you know what? I do my own brakes because it leaves me a hundred bucks or more that I would have had to pay somebody to do my brakes. I still do it so I can give it to missions. And when you don't have, you know, Netflix and Hulu and all that kind of stuff that you watch trash by it, when you don't have that, you can afford to give more to missions. Uh, we used to do what 
what was called the Gospel According to Scrooge at Christmas. And then at Easter, we did what was called the Promises, were two major productions. We had about 140 or 50 people involved in each of those presentations. But Christmas and Easter, we'd, we'd have over 2,000 pre-Christians come to our service to see those. You say pre-Christian. Well, yeah, they're, they're either a Christian or they're a pre-Christian. And we'd have 2,000 people come. Well, one night we, we had uh, England, 1840, the gospel according to Scrooge, and one of our kids came running through trip, fell, and he took down one of our light poles. Boom! And it broke all over the place. And so the next, after that night we made it through, well, the next day I was fixing the light posts for our next production that night. And one of our men came in and said, what are you doing, Pastor Dave? And I said, I'm fixing this, you know, and I got bailing wire and I got duct tape and all kinds of stuff. I'm fixing this light. And he said, why don't you just go buy a new light? I said, because a new light fixture is $150 and $150 can support one of our missionaries for a month. And he said, do you think of everything in, in terms of missions? What do you think the answer was? I do. I think of everything in terms of missions. It's all for Jesus. It is the, that all nations hear his name. And they can move from the 30% that have never heard. They can at least move into the 40% that they've heard. They just said no. Or they can move into the 20% or the 10% that are followers of Jesus, loving Jesus. Every second in the 1040 window, somebody dies without Jesus. So my question is, are you going to give or are you going to go? Um, Emily laid some of these faith missions, promises, up here on the seat. And here's what I do with people. I get them to fill out cards like this. Get you to fill out your faith promise card. And now I want you to think about, do you need it back? Because maybe you didn't put enough on there. See, in American culture, we'd like to talk people down. The principle of the kingdom is let God talk you up. Because I believe some of you, your faith has risen and you said, I can be a part of that. I can, some of you didn't make one of these out. I used to, we had one lady in the, in the church that she survived from social security check to social security check. And she would sit and cry and say, Pastor Dave, I can't give the missions. I'd give her some money so she could give the missions. Some of you, you put a figure on your missions faith promise. But this morning, the Holy Spirit has said to you, you, can, you, you need to change that because I can do more through you. Missions faith promise isn't what you can do. It's what God can do through you. What are you willing to let him do through you? Let's all stand. J.C. Penney was a millionaire. But J.C. Penney so acknowledged the kingdom of God that he flipped the tithing principle and he kept 10% and gave away 90%. How many, how many will pray about going? Put your hand up. We'll pray about going. Yeah? yeah? How many will respond to the one with all authority and say, I'm going to give? I'm going to give. You know, every hand in this room ought to be out. I'm going to give. If you, 
if you'd like to be prayed over so that you can give more to the work of the kingdom, I want you to come to the front right now. You believe God could do something miraculous in your life and you could become a millionaire. I want you to step out. Come on. You, you believe God could do something miraculous where all of a sudden funds begin to flow into your life? If you're afraid, I'll hold my breath when I get to you. Yeah. I've already had my COVID, so. Had my shot. I believe this morning God wants our faith to increase. Well, I just, I don't think I could be a millionaire. How many think you can make another $5,000 more than you make right now? If you, could, if you don't tithe on your first dollar, J.C. Penny said, you can't tithe on your first million. You can't give according to your first dollar. You can't give according to your first million. It starts right where we are with what we have. <laughs> Father God, right now, I just pray for every person in this congregation. Pastor Esty, why don't you join me? I pray for every person in this congregation. I pray that your bounty, your supply comes into the lives of each of these, your people. I pray for your bounty, Lord. I pray for your abundance. I pray that you begin to pour into the lives of these people. They look at it and go, I don't know where this came from. I don't know where it came from. Father God, I pray for the miraculous. I pray for, I pray for ideas. I pray for dreams. I pray, pray for creations. I pray for inventions that our world can use and then we can use it to finance your kingdom. Father God, we just agree it today. We agree it today. Blessings, 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 blessings. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Pour out, pour out, pour out. Pour out, pour out on your people today. You said you would pour it into our lives, pressed down, shaken together, running over. We receive that today, Lord Jesus. We receive that today, Lord Jesus. Father God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, let creativity come into your people so that they can finance the kingdom to take it around the world so that the Christine Littles, the Alexandria Pavlantos, is Thank you for the strangers, Lord. We thank you for the Bowsers, Lord. We thank you for the Thackers, Lord. And we just pray for abundance. We pray for abundance, oh God. Father God, today we pray for our kids. We pray for our children. Father God, let us plant within the hearts of our children that there is nothing more valuable that they can do in life than to give their lives to you, to the winning of the lost. Oh God, we pray it. Oh God, tell our kids to stop in Yemen. You've already told them to go. Tell them that's a good place you can stop. Oh my. Oh my God. Lord Jesus. Jesus has all authority. He has all power. Jesus says, take this message to all nations. Jesus says, I want all of you. I want all of your kids. I want all your finances. Because I want your prayer. I want your prayer.
Anybody with a prophetic word for us today? and see that the Lord is good. Step out in faith and see. Seven point eight billion people on our planet. Two billion in the earth. the Lord's will for you tomorrow, pray, pray for missions, pray for kids in this church, pray for young couples in this church, pray. And then you either give or you go. But, uh, Lord, get, Lord didn't give a whole, whole list of options. Give or you go. That's Rusty. Thank you, Pastor Dave. I want to encourage you. We've received a challenge this morning. A challenge from the Word of God, a challenge from the minister, a challenge from the prophetic word. To try and see. Uh, and when Pastor Dave mentioned about giving to the point that it's going to cost you something, that's that struck my heart. And I'm going to say something that Emily's probably going to get upset with me, but that's okay. She loves me and she'll get over it. Why do you work, Emily? Why do you work? She works so she can give money to missions. Retirement's not an issue for her. She's got to give to missions, so she works. This morning, I want to challenge you. What are you not doing that you really could be doing to help fulfill God's call upon your life of seeing people find Jesus? I want to challenge you this morning. I believe the Holy Spirit's not done with what he wants to tell you. What changes can you make to be a better disciple of Jesus Christ? I'm going to pray over you a prayer of blessing to be the giver that God wants you to be. And as you receive that, I mean, you can't, you can't imagine what God wants to do in your life. Let me pray for you. Father, I speak a blessing over each one under the sound of my voice. The blessing of obedience. The blessing of serving. Father, the blessing of being willing to go. And Lord, the blessing of being willing to be told, don't go but give. Father, your will being accomplished. The needs being met and the lost hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ with clarity. Lord, I speak a blessing upon each one under the sound of my voice that we will hear you, we will listen, and we will obey whatever you say. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray each one here walks in that blessing. From this day forward, thank you now, Father. We receive that today in Jesus' name. And everyone who received that said, Amen.
Amen. Would you remain in your seat? We have a thank you for those who have given their pledges. The young people are coming and they're going to hand them out to you. And I'm glad you're there. I missed you. And as, uh, as the, these envelopes are being passed out, um, as those are being passed out, we're also going to make our offering proclamation together. And I've got a terrible thing to tell you. I keep forgetting. I get talking to people and I forget to go put this in. So I've got three weeks with it. Lord bless me. I haven't spent it. I'm putting it in. But let's make our offering proclamation together. Lord, I sow my finances in the kingdom of God. The gospel will be preached in all the world. Lives will be set free and the kingdom of Satan will be stopped. It will produce for God and for me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I count it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. If you haven't gotten your envelope yet, go looking for it. She's tracking everybody down. Tonight, we've got small groups at 5. We've also got youth group at 5 o'clock. I'll be with the youth. So plan on coming, joining us for that. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Global Re Bible Study Tuesday at 6 o'clock out here. We've got Wednesday night Bible Study. We've got, your, is your group this week? This Friday, Ed and Jeans. We've got a lot of things going on. You need to be involved. You need to be a part. God wants to bless you through this. So join us for those. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Lord bless you.